Okay, now I'm going to try to explain how this all works. This is a very, very basic tube amplifier diagram. This would be your input. It could be, say, a microphone or a guitar or even your CD player. This is the resistor that biases the grid, which I spoke about earlier, making it more negative than the cathode. This is the cathode resistor, which holds the cathode slightly above ground. And this capacitor they added when they were first people designed these amplifiers. And what that does is that allows the AC, that is the signal going through the tube, to go directly to ground instead of having to go through this resistor. This is the plate or anode. Now we've added the transformer, the output transformer. Most tube equipment has an output transformer. There are some exceptions to that rule, but we won't get into that. This would be the B plus supply. It could be a battery such as this, or um, a rectified half wave rectifier circuit like I showed in an earlier drawing. And this is ground. Then on the output side of your transformer, you have a, a, a small coil of wire because what the transformer does <clears throat> is it converts high voltage, low current, to lower voltage at higher current. It's the same amount of power. If you put 10 watts in this side of the transformer, you will get 10 watts out this side of the transformer, uh, minus any slight losses in the transformer. So basically the transformer is a converter. It converts high voltage, low current to low voltage, high current, enough to drive a speaker. You don't need a lot of voltage to drive a speaker, you need a lot of current. So basically the signal goes in here. Now when the tube is biased, at idle, no signal. Your volume is all the way down or you're not playing your guitar or the CD player is off. There's no signal. A certain amount of current is going to flow between the cathode and the anode just sitting there. A certain amount of current is flowing. That is what your bias sets. Where this grid is in terms of voltage sets the bias. Now with a, a standard power tube, uh, we'll say the um, bias should be set at 80 milliamps. That means with no signal going in, if you put a, a, a current meter right here, either in the anode circuit or in the cathode circuit or here or anywhere in this loop of the tube, which is where the current is flowing, you will read 80 milliamps at idle, no signal put in. <clears throat> That is your bias. You change the bias by how much voltage is on the grid. So if the grid becomes more negative, less current will flow. So to make the grid more negative, you put a smaller resistor here. Well, what does bias do? I mean, why would you want to change the bias? Isn't there just one bias that works for everything? Well, yes and no. Um, there are many classes of tube amplifiers. You have class A, you have class AB, you have class B, and you have class C. Now class C, there's a, there's a term called cutoff. Cutoff is when there's so much voltage on the grid, negative voltage on the grid, that no current will flow between the cathode and the anode. So if a tube is biased class C, it is biased at cutoff or very close to cutoff so that no current flows. That's fine for such things as like switches and stuff, but in amplifiers, why would you want it biased right at cutoff where there's no current flowing? A lot of transmitting tubes, radio transmitters, um, shortwave, anything like that that's tube, most of those are biased near cutoff. The reason being is it saves power and it saves tube life because there's no current flowing when you're not doing anything. Well, why wouldn't you want an audio amplifier there? That would make it very efficient. Well, yes and no. The trouble is, is when you put an AC signal, such as music or guitar or microphone or whatever on the grid, that's AC. That looks like this, a sine wave. Well, if the tube is already at cutoff, that means there's no current flowing. So if this signal goes up, positively, 
it's going to take the grid farther away from ground, bring it higher, not so negative. So the tube will start to conduct. That part of the cycle will be fine because as the AC signal goes up, the tube will conduct more and more and it will match the same signal going out. But when the signal comes back down to zero, the tube will be at cutoff. And now this is going to go down and you're going to get a distortion because now that this is below where cutoff is, the tube is not going to amplify or do anything with this signal that is below zero because it's at cutoff. So there will be a great distortion. Class C amplifiers do not work well with audio signals. <clears throat> They're usually used for transmitting and uh, receiving in radio frequency and, and such. Class AB is sometimes used for audio, although it's not as pure. Um, many amplifiers are at class AB. That's not biased at cutoff, meaning there is some current flowing through the tube, but it is biased closer to cutoff than a class A amplifier. So then what would happen is this is not ground. Grid is biased slightly above ground now. The tube is flowing some current all the time. So what happens then is as your signal in goes up on the upswing of the sine wave, the tube conducts more and allows that signal to pass greater. It amplifies the signal. Then as this gets lower than where it's biased, it's getting closer to cutoff. It's going more negative. The tube is biased above cutoff, so it can conduct less as this goes down. So it will amplify this as it goes down. It will still pass that signal. It will, it will pass less signal. It doesn't get to cut off. The problem with that is, is if you put in a very large signal, the tube will distort easily because you are very close to the cutoff. When they, when they design the amplifier and it's biased right, it's very, very close to cutoff on the downswing. So if you overdrive it, it will go into the cutoff and you will get distortion. A lot of, in fact, I think most guitar amplifiers are class AB because of that. If you overdrive them, you get the distortion. Now, class A is biased way above cutoff. It's biased usually near the center of maximum conduction and cutoff. So you have the greatest possible swing on your signal. But class A is less efficient because it's always conducting electricity. Always. There's always current flowing between the cathode and the anode, even when there's no signal. So there, like I said earlier, this could be biased at 80 milliamps. There's 80 milliamps always flowing through here, even though there's no sound coming out. That's where it's biased. Then when you put a signal in, it modulates that grid, allowing more current to flow and less current to flow as that signal comes in and the tube thus conducts more current or less current which makes more or less audio come out. I hope I'm explaining this well. It's been a long time since I've done any kind of a presentation. Uh, in fact it was college in 1997 so that's it's been quite a long time. Um, Hopefully, if you have any questions, you can post them, and I'll try my best to explain this a little bit more detailed. So, basically, that's how a tube amplifier works, and that's how biasing works. Um, now I'll go into the different types of outputs of tube amplifiers.